Welcome to Camarillo United Methodist Church. We are glad to be joining together in worship this morning. It is always a joy to, to be here in this uh, sacred space in which we gather, as well as those who are joining us online. We welcome you, and we're glad that, we, that you are uh, part of this worship service as well. Uh, please take a moment to uh, uh, register your attendance by filling out that, the back portion, the connection card portion of your bulletin. And again, uh, even though you're a regular attender, uh, at least uh, fill your name out, and so that way uh, uh, we know that you are joining us in worship this morning. And for those of you who are joining us online, um, you can go to our church website at camarillomc.org and download the worship bulletin as well as fill out the, the online connection card, letting us know that you're joining us in worship this morning. Um, if you are new to, the, to worship this morning, we extend a special welcome to you and hope that you uh, feel home at this church. And if you do, do not have a regular place of worship, consider making Camarillo UMC your church home. Now, as we come together, you, uh, you should have received the bulletin, and there's a couple of inserts in there. First uh, insert is, a, well, actually, you should have also received a, a little colorful um, card. It's like a size of a post-it, and that will be used at the... Um, during the sermon and at the end of the service, and so please uh, hold on to that. And then you also should have received an insert for the Easter lilies. Easter is only a few weeks away. <laughs> what week is this? <laughs> um, it's coming though, and so uh, um, the Easter lily forms, uh, if you wish to dedicate a, um, uh, an Easter lily to, to a loved one, in memory or in honor of someone, uh, please fill out the uh, Easter lily form and turn it into, well, you can turn it into the ushers uh, um, or uh, to the church office. Um, the orders have to be in by April 10th. It should say somewhere here. So by April 10th, so that we can make sure that the dedication sheet that comes out on Easter, which is on April 17th, that I know. Um, we will have all the Easter lilies here. So please uh, make sure that uh, uh, you turn th those forms in. Now we also have, uh, uh, we're always grateful for the gift of altar flowers and uh, the wonderful arrangement there on the right um, is given by Joy Hart in honor of her daughter-in-law, Debbie Hart's birthday. So we congratulate uh, Debbie. Uh, may Debbie be filled with joy, <laughs> with joy, uh, as she celebrates her special day. We continue to keep Debbie in prayer uh, because we know that Debbie is on hospice, and so we uh, continue to lift her up in prayer. There is another celebration that's happening uh, that we want to celebrate today, uh, and that is to congratulate Dr. Luvi. <laughs> Dr. Luvi Avendano. Where's your cap and gown? <laughs> it's later, okay. <laughs> we gotta see that later. Um, many of you, well all of you, have walked with um, uh, Dr. Luby, uh, with Luby during his uh, years here as he, um, I think, uh, coinciding with your um, start at this church 10 years ago, 10 years, coming up on 10 years, um, he started his uh, PhD program uh, at Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara. Uh, it took a while. We kept, I guess we kept him busy, huh? But he, um, um, the, the work is all done, and I believe this past Friday, on March 18th, uh, he was conferred doctor of, doctorate of music? Yeah. Music education? Musical arts. Musical arts. So, Dr. Lu. <laughs> After church today, there will be cake. <laughs> cake is always good, so uh, that'll be part of the uh, coffee fellowship time uh, later on in the service. With that, uh, let's all uh, continue in our worship service um, by joining together in the call to worship. I invite you to stand as you're able and direct your attention to um, our liturgist, Margie Bouton, as she leads us. Please join in the call to worship as found in your bulletin. 
Give thanks to God who is good. Let the redeemed of God say so. Let those gathered in from every land say so. Please join in singing All Who Hunger, found on page 2126 of our Faith We Sing songbook. Please join in praying the communal prayer as found in the bulletin or on the screen. Let us pray. Holy One, when we are alone in the desert, wandering through the wilderness, we call to you, for you are our help. Our souls cling to you. Come, God, and hold us up. Come bring your presence and fill us with your peace. In the shadow of your wings, we will sing for joy. Amen. Good morning. Oh, wonderful. We can gather right up here. Do you want me to hold on to that, Marianne? Okay. You can take that to Sunday school with you. Wow, good morning. And you can come up here to the second row to be closer to us if you'd like. Everyone is welcome. Moms, too. Absolutely. So, we are in the season of Lent, journeying towards Easter. But today is also the first day of another season. Does anyone know? Yes, Austin. March, you are right. We are in the month of March. And Miss Caroline? Spring. The season of spring starts today. And when I think of spring, I tend to think of one word just comes to mind. And I'm going to see if you can guess it. And I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with, let me see, throw or crow or Grow! You are right, Marianne. Grow was the word that I was thinking of. And during spring, I think of butterflies and birdies growing and bunnies and flowers and even us, especially during the season of Lent. Now, the last two weeks, 
we have gone over some words in the Lord's Prayer, right? We went over the beginning. You can say it with me if you remember. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And today we're going to talk about give us this day our daily bread. You're right. I like to think, I love words. So when I think of bread, a big word comes to mind and that word is sustenance. That's a big old word, isn't it? And it just means a source of strength and nourishment. And this bread helps us when we eat it. It helps us grow physically, right? Our body's strong. And it even helps our minds grow, right? So we can learn how to read and write and arithmetic. But when Jesus in that prayer taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread, he wasn't just talking about bread for our bodies and our minds. As a matter of fact, he said, man does not live on bread alone, or food or water alone. There's a little something more that we need. The bread that he was talking about is bread that it doesn't make our bones bigger and our feet bigger or our brains learn that three plus three is six. Six, yep. Yeah. You're right. Yes. No, Jesus was talking about daily bread that helps us, let me see how I could explain it. It helps us love our neighbor no matter who they are or forgive someone who made us really mad, or help our hearts heal after someone that we love very much has died. And it also helps us, like if we're sad or lonely, or if we don't get invited to a birthday party. And it also helps us share God's love and light with others. Now. How do we get that kind of bread? Well, I tell you what, I went to Sprouts and Vaughn's Bakeries. They don't have it. So I checked with Target and even online with Amazon. And guess what? No, they don't have it. Nope. We get that kind of bread by staying in love with God. Okay, so how do we stay in love with God? Y yes. Okay, that's okay. Did you have an idea? Yeah, you, we come to church, we go to Sunday school, we join bells with Christy, we come to the program this Saturday, our spring barbecue craft event, we pray, or even if we sit one minute a day in silence in God's presence, right? Or come to Crescendo in August. All of those enriching programs help us stay in love with God. And when we stay in love with God, we grow in our faith. And you know what happens when we grow in our faith? It's another rhyming word with grow. We glow. Okay, not like Martians or glow worms, but we glow with joy and kindness and patience and forgiveness, and we have hope, and we trust, and we love, and we can have a peace that surpasses all this human understanding. Okay, before you go to Sunday school and grow with maybe having a little bit of this bread, physically and mentally, but happy, growing spiritually and happy glowing. Would you pray with me before we go to Sunday school? Yeah. Awesome God, we are so grateful for this church. 
where we come to learn and to grow and to stay in love with you. We are so grateful for your son, Jesus, the true bread of life, who taught us to trust in you for all of our needs. Give us this day our daily bread and help us to share your love and your light with all whom we meet. It is with grateful hearts we pray, and together we say, Amen. Sunday School. truly good to be here and it's good to come together and hear those words of prayer that we've been studying the last few weeks. We come to a time in which we offer prayer. We offer prayer for our congregation, our community, and of course the world around us. And so I invite you to bow, uh, that we may bow together in prayer. Let us bow our heads. O God of grace and compassion, we give you thanks, O God, as we come before you in worship. We give you thanks, O God, for all the ways that you watch over us and guide us in our lives. You're truly the provider of all things, and you sustain us as we go through our daily grinds. Especially during this Lenten season, may we be mindful of your ever presence and your constant love for us. Lord, there, there never seems to be a break from all the crises of life in our world. As war continues to break out in, in Europe, we pray for the refugees and those seeking safety from the conflicts. Guide our leaders in, in providing the humanitarian relief efforts and meeting the needs of the people who are in harm's way. We pray for your peace and a just resolution to this crisis. Oh God, you're truly the source of life and we cling to you for sustenance and support. We lift up prayers for those in our congregation in need of special prayers. We pray for Helen Kiyocho as she travels to the Philippines today to be with family upon the passing of her sister Edith, her aunt Lolita, and her uncle Alvarino. Be with the whole family, O oh God, as they deal with the multiple passings of their loved ones within this past week. Be with Phil, Sheena, and, and the girls as they manage without Helen while she's away. Surround them with your, with your love. Surround them with your peace. May they know that you are truly the God of the resurrection and is always there with us. We also lift up prayers for Mark Rogers as he has been readmitted to the hospital. Lord, place your healing hands upon him and give him strength to overcome the challenges in his recovery process. Work through the medical staff in providing the care in which he needs. Be also with Arnold Channing as well as, as he continues to receive treatment for his ailment. May your healing presence give them strength and peace. And for all those who are struggling with health, health concerns, Lord, may you be the source of strength and hope. May your presence be the source of peace that brings, around, brings about the healing to our bodies and our souls. 
Oh God, there are many prayers that we hold in our hearts. Receive them now, oh God, as we pray to you in silence. O God of compassion, have mercy upon us all. You are the source of life and the source of all things that we need to live in this life. Provide for us, O God, that we may be content. Provide for the sick, provide for the needy, and provide for us all that we may be witnesses that share in your abundance to the world. We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us all to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we continue in the worship, um, I'd like to share with you some celebrations. Uh, and events coming up in our church. Uh, the SSP auction is two weeks away. Uh, tickets for this wonderful event um, is, uh, is available starting today uh, on the patio. Uh, so look for the youth uh, that will be um, um, selling the tickets to this auction event. Um, SSB, for those who are not aware, is a, uh, is a, is a mission trip. It's a youth mission project. Um, and this year, our youth will be going to the Navajo Nation uh, in Staley, Arizona, uh, where they will be working on homes and, and other building projects to help the communities there. Uh, the auction helps to fund uh, the cost of sending our youth, and we currently have about 21 folks that will be going to uh, um, uh, on this mission trip. Uh, to help uh, with the community there as well as uh, an invaluable uh, learning experience for our youth. And so um, the auction, as you can guess by the picture, it's like a Hawaiian theme. So we'll have like a Hawaiian luau on April 3rd, uh, I believe at 4 p.m. Um, it's sure to be a, a fun, uh, fun gathering and with great food. And so uh, make sure that um, you get those tickets before they sell out. There's only a limited amount of tickets um, for that evening. Also, if you have things that could be used or uh, to be, that could be donated to for the auction items, um, please see Christy Van Kier's bill uh, and let her know. All right. Uh, this Saturday, uh, we have that all church event that uh, Ms. Connie uh, mentioned. Uh, it's a wonderful event uh, as we welcome spring. Uh, so I invite you to come and uh, um, come and, and invite friends to the crafting event uh, where we'll make, uh, I think, what are we making? Birdhouses, sun catchers, flower pots, it's a lot of crafts. Um, also, also, there will be barbecue food and, and wonderful fellowship. It will be a fun event. So I invite you to, to be there. Um, now, so, several weeks ago, and this I will go down. <laughs> there you go. Several weeks ago, uh, I showed you this picture um, of our friendship garden, and it was full of weeds. Yes, those are weeds. That, that's not... Uh, nice green stuff. Those are weeds. Um, 
And uh, we began uh, this uh, campaign, our capital campaign, to, um, uh, to clean up that, our, our friendship garden, make it a usable space, but also uh, to conserve water so that we can uh, uh, be more intentional in, in directing our, our water usage uh, to, to um, water our trees um, and so that we, can, we want to plant more trees. And we actually have, we planted a tree, we actually have two more trees that will be, so we're planting more trees and being able to water them so uh, uh, we won't be losing our trees anymore. But instead, um, as far as the grass goes, uh, to lay the artificial grass uh, so there will be a functional space for gatherings and community building. Well, if you haven't already seen it as you drove in, have you seen it? Who's seen it already? <laughs> Who intentionally went up there to look at it? <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Right? Um, uh, truly give thanks for um, the, 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 the support of the congregation. And so we actually have a video that we wanted to share uh, of the project of, of the work that was done this past week. So. As if you don't need more flowers, but we have a little flower from, it's actually from the weeding team. The weeding team wanted to know if they're off the hook now. And 
No. <laughs> there's there's more there's continual uh, caring for God's creation that is that is needed, um, but at least we don't have to deal with weeds in the friendship garden. So three of us weeded out here the other day, and it was so fun to work amongst the greens. No. Oh. Cleared weeds, and I said, now it's now So thank you for helping to support this project. We've got more greening to do. And it actually looks better in real life too. So um, after service, uh, I invite you to go and uh, check it out. You know, take off your shoes and, and walk around. Um, as, as you saw, uh, uh, Linda and I actually lied down and we were rolling around. So uh, it actually is it's, it's wonderful. We're getting ready for a lot of events and, and um, uh, other functions uh, out on the, out on the uh, Friendship Garden. Um, especially during the summer, we're going to start our Concerts in the Garden series. So it's how all of this is happening, is coming together. Truly give thanks to the congregation for, uh, for helping to support that. That's just part one. We still are not done. We, we are um, also um, putting... Uh, artificial grass for our preschool because they're playing around in dirt right now and so uh, we're still um, uh, have, have more to do all right so again thank you and thank you for the media team for getting that up and running <laughs> there is um, along with you know the, the, the raising the fund for the, the greening uh, project of our campus uh, we can't ignore that there is a co continual need uh, to support the work of UMCOR uh, that is um, that for the humanitarian relief efforts that's needed in Ukraine at this time. And so, uh, so far, uh, we've been um, um, encouraging the congregation to uh, give also to the humanitarian efforts uh, to UMCOR. And so far, we've given over 20,000 just within this month. This is only week three, right? Yeah, week three. So within three weeks, um, we've raised over 20,000 that's um, going to um, uh, Ukraine to help the relief efforts there, so thank you. This is truly a testament of this congregation, what this congregation can do when we step up and really uh, be the church, in, not only in our community, but in our world. So congratulations to all of you, and um, again, thank you as we join together in, in really uh, moving our church forward. Uh, one last thing before I move on to whatever that's next. Um, if you're interested in membership, uh, being uh, joining and being an official member of the church, next week um, after worship service, um, probably in the choir room, uh, I will be holding a new member orientation. And so if you're interested uh, or just wondering what does what is membership in the United Methodist Church mean or wh what does membership in this church mean, um, come to uh, that session it's after worship service next Sunday in the choir room. All right, so with that, we're going to uh, continue in our worship service. There it is. Um, again, we are grateful for all the things that happens in, in the life of this church. It is truly uh, God's blessing and God's gift to us and just calling us to be the church. Um, and so all your gifts and your financial support helps to make all these ministries happen. I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward at this time to, re to collect and to receive our gifts, tithes, and our offering.
Please join in praying together the prayer of dedication found in your bulletin. Grace of God, you have fed our spirits and nourished our souls. You have supported us in every possible way. May the gifts we bring this morning be an offering of our gratitude, and may they be a promise to share what we have received from your hand. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. Following the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus challenges the people to consider what they really need to satisfy their hunger. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in a word of prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we truly give you thanks as we come together at this time to reflect upon this, uh, 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 this passage as well as continue in our series in the Lord's, Lord's Prayer. Lord, may your Holy Spirit be upon us. May your Holy Spirit fill our hearts and our minds and our ears with uh, what you have to say to us. And, and we pray that your Spirit will, will uh, lead us at this time. May the meditations of all of our hearts and the words of our mouths be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. There's a story about uh, how the president of Anheuser-Busch uh, company, you guys know what Anheuser-Busch is, right? Not that. <laughs> um, there's... I guess someone wants bread. Uh, so the pres um, president of Anheuser-Busch, the uh, beer company, um, uh, visited the Vatican and, made a, and wanted to make a deal with the Catholic, Catholic Church. The president uh, asked for a private meeting with the Pope, and it went something like this. He said, holy eminence, we are prepared to make a donation of $100 million to the church if you would simply replace give us this day our daily bread with give us this day our daily beer. <laughs> and the Pope said, my son, I'm afraid that that's not possible. So the Anheuser-Busch um, pressed a bit harder. Could you do it for a bigger contribution? Say 
250 million? And the Pope said, I'm afraid that's still not possible. <laughs> and Anna as Bush finally said, okay, okay. Holy Eminence, I see that you drive a tough bargain. Here's my final offer. Change bread to beer, and I'll write a check for $1 billion. And the Pope picked up the phone and said, Cardinal Mancini, how firm is our contract with Pillsbury? <laughs> Should ask our Pillsbury family here. <laughs> um, it's not real. That didn't happen. We continue in our series on the Lord's Prayer, Sermon on the Lord's Prayer. And for the past two weeks, uh, we looked at the, the, the first part of the prayer, which focuses on our relationship with God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's focused on praising God, who God is, and, and God's kingdom. Today, we transition to the second part which shifts from the language of thy to the language of us. And because the deal with Anheuser-Busch didn't quite go through, we begin with the prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. Now, what does that mean? Now, many of you know that I love bread. I, Several people, if you know that, uh, I love bread, all kinds of bread. You know, zucchini bread, uh, banana bread, and and all kinds of pastries. And and between uh, Peggy Graham and and Bonnie Ng and Lisa Katawaki and and uh, Dorothy Roth, um, I get my fill of bread here. Uh, I have no problem with getting my share of the daily bread. In fact, um, there's an abundance of food that I I can see. And as we as Methodists. We, we know how to eat, don't we? We love to eat. You know, we have our fellowship meals, our, our senior luncheon, which is now the noontime luncheon. Um, we have our Methodist potlucks and, of course, Holy Communion. I just call that being good Christians because I always say Jesus is the one that started it. You know, Jesus ate with everyone. He sat down and ate with everyone, and we're just following that Jesus tradition. We eat. And it's part of that fellowship, and we just love to eat. There is an abundance. In fact, it reminds me of the story that precedes the passage that we just read, and that is the feeding of the 5,000. You all know that story, right? It's a, it's, it's a well-known story of Jesus' miracle. In fact, it's the only miracle that's recorded in all four Gospels. It's that, you know, that, that important. In fact, it's actually uh, told in a, a, a different rendition six times in, in, the, in the four Gospels. So figure that out. If you recall that story, Jesus is leading a crowd and is teaching in an open space. And as the day gets late, the disciples say to Jesus, Lord, let's send the people away to their neighboring villages so that they can go and get something to eat for themselves. It's sort of like a reverse evangelism, right? Send them away to fend for themselves. Not quite what they should be doing, but that's what they say. And Jesus says to them, no, you feed them. And the disciples sort of are, 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 are dumbfounded, not knowing what to do. They look around, and there's a boy that comes up, and they have five loaves and two fish. But as far as the disciples are concerned, that's barely enough for the 12 of them plus Jesus. But you all know the story and what happens. Jesus takes the bread, he gives thanks to God, and then he breaks it, and he breaks it, and he breaks it. And he gives out the pieces to the multitude of people, and according to the passages, it says that 5,000 men, not including women and children, were all fed. And when they had all eaten, they collected 12 baskets of leftovers. 12. Huh. What a convenient number, isn't it? Coincidental number? You see, God provides what we need, and it is truly in an abundance, such that every person was fed. Now, some would say that our 
current population or our current planet is getting way too crowded. It's getting overpopulated, and we are running out of food to feed the world. There are people. There are, we know this. We, there are people throughout the world and even in our neighborhoods who do not have enough to eat. There's starvation all around us. And yet, when we look at the amount of food that we consume and the amount of food that gets wasted, we have to ask ourselves, is it truly not enough food? I wonder if it's not a matter of equal distribution rather than scarcity of food in the world. In that Bible story, it says that a little boy had come forward to share what he had and, and that the disciples took what the five loaves and two fish from the boy and then gave it to Jesus. Of course, we all have to ask ourselves, really, how, how is it that out of 5,000 people that only a boy would have food? Most likely, they all had food. And when everyone just kind of hid the food for themselves, yes, there was not enough food. But once Jesus took that food, gave thanks to God, said some words, I'm sure just kind of prodded the people, convicted their hearts, and everyone started sh taking out their food and sharing it. When everyone shared, in the end, everyone was fed. And afterwards, there were 12 baskets. That number 12, is it a coincidence? When, 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 when everyone had eaten, they collected 12 baskets of leftovers. And it's as if that 12 baskets represents the 12 disciples who lacked the faith to trust that Jesus would figure something out, that Jesus would provide what they needed, and that abundance is just enough so that when everyone shares, there is truly enough for everyone. You see, that's the lesson that God tries to try to teach the Israelites back in the Old Testament, in the days of Moses, when they left Egypt and were wandering in the wilderness for 40, day, 40 years, uh, they complained. They complained that they didn't have anything. They, they, they complained about everything, you know, typical people. Um, and they complained that they were thirsty. And so what does God do? God provides water um, to come out of a spring from a rock. And then they complained that they were hungry. And so then God provided food called manna. Manna. Now what is manna? We hear that term often, but what is manna? What God provided the Israelites was something very pe peculiar. It was this white, flaky stuff that formed on the ground every morning when they woke up. No one knew what it was. They've never seen it before. And so they call it manna. Because in Hebrew, it literally translates to, what is it? That's what manna means. What is it? Or what you might call it? It's that, what, what manna is, is that it's that thingamajig that God provides. Something that we have no comprehension of, but it is something that God provides. And it was good. It's said to be, you know, according to uh, the, the book of Exodus, it's said to be, to be light and flaky. They could eat it straight or bake it in, into a cake, you know. Some of you would figure out what, all kinds of things to do with that. You remember the story, right? Every morning when the Israelites went out to gather manna, God told them to gather just enough for one day's worth. As Jesus said, give us this day, this day, our daily bread. That was the instruction to the Israelites. Just collect enough for that day. Of course, what did the Israelites do? We, you know, we don't just gather for one day, do we? When we go shopping, we just, do we just go shopping for one day? No, we like going to Costco. Big stuff, right? We want security. We want comfort of having a whole stockpile of food, right? Fill up the refrigerators. Fill up the pantries. But God says, it's not helpful for us to have more than we need. Because the danger is that when, we, when we're comfortable 
and have more than we need, we feel like we, feel like we don't need anything else, including God. Do you know people like that? When everything goes our way and we have all that we need, a secure job, a happy family, good health, and, and a plush bank account, we forget that we are truly dependent on God. And so God provided manna from heaven each day, expecting the Israelites to, to depend on him daily. Now, as you can imagine, Every once in a while, the people would get greedy and try to gather more than their, their, <clears throat> their day's worth. And when they did, did that, what happened? You guys remember the story? They opened up the jar the next morning, and it would be spoiled, full of worms. Ew, bugs, right? Well, worms aren't bugs, but they, they're still girls. Um, how many of us throw away food that has gone spoiled? Right? There's a lesson here. You know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the book of Proverbs, um, chapter 30, Proverbs 30, the writer Augur says these words. He writes, Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that I need, or I shall be full and deny you, and say, Who is the Lord? Or I shall be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Listen to that again from Proverbs 30. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that I need, or I shall be full and deny you, and say, who is the Lord? Or I shall be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Wisdom, isn't it? You see, give, give us this day is a prayer of contentment. To know, that, to, to know that God is faithful in providing exactly what we need. As the writer of, of Matthew says uh, in Matthew chapter 6, he says uh, the same chapter that in the Matthew, uh, Matthew's version is the Lord's Prayer. Jesus says, do not worry about what you will wear or what you will eat. Look at the flowers in the field or the birds in the air. God provides everything for them. And if so then how much more will God provide for you? But there's more to this lesson about the daily bread. The, um, uh, I once heard um, that the Greek word for the word daily is actually a word that is not used anywhere. The Greek word used is, is it's called epiution, and it only appears in this passage in the Lord's Prayer. And nowhere else in the Bible. In fact, in all of Greek literature, it's not used as a, as a word. It's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't come up any, anywhere in, in Greek literature, except in the Lord's Prayer. And that word, epiousion, means, well, it's, it's, it's a combination of two words. Epi means around, and ousion is actually a word that the early church used to describe the very essence of God. And they used that word when they would, they would describe Jesus, that Jesus was the very essence of God. So this daily bread is talking about our daily need for the essence of God. Epiusion is more than just daily food that we eat. It's referring to the very essence that we need to sustain life. As God said when, when tempted in the wilderness, as Jesus said when, when, you know, when tempted, man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that flows from the mouth of God. That very word that flows from the mouth of God is that of Christ Jesus. A psychologist, uh, Abraham Maslow, said that when our basic needs for food, shelter, and clothing, and security are met, then we begin to focus on the higher needs. And that higher need is what we understand as being God's grace, unconditional love, a life's purpose, and a connection to something bigger, something bigger than ourselves. That is the hunger that ultimately drives us. Don't you have that hunger? 
to know something bigger than ourselves, to, 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 to know what, what is there beyond just our daily grind of trying to survive each day, there has to be something bigger, right? You know, sometimes we look at celebrities, famous celebrities. They seem to have all everything that, they, that you need, that they need. And yet, so many of them struggle with depression and addiction. But they're searching for something more. This past Sunday, um, last Sunday, uh, there was news that shocked the, the, football, fo the football world, the sports world. Do you know what that was? There was a news that came out. It was about, well, who's the greatest football player? <laughs> Tom Brady, who retired two months ago, and everyone thought, you know, he's accomplished everything. You know, he won seven Super Bowl, he, you know, Super Bowls more than any, you know, football team, franchise, you know, five MVPs, record holder for multiple things. He has done it all. He has accomplished everything. What more is there to do? And yet, two, two months after retirement, he announced last Sunday, nope, he's coming back. He, he, there's something more that he's striving for. He once said in an interview um, over 10 years ago, uh, when, when he only, at that time, only won three Super Bowl rings, he said on 60 Minutes, why have I, uh, why, yeah, why, why do I have three Super Bowl rings and still think there's something greater out there for me? That's what he said. Maybe a lot of people would say, hey, man, this is what it's about. I reached my goal, my life, my, my dreams, me? I think it's got to be more than this. That is what he said. I mean, this can't be. What's the answer? I wish I knew. I love football. I love being a quarterback. But at the same time, I think there are a lot of other parts of me or about me that I'm still trying to figure out. A guy who's accomplished so much is still searching. That, my friends, is that relationship that relationship that sustains us, that truly sustains us, something that is greater than any person or anything in this world. We pray that, we pray give us this day our daily bread so that we can have life in the one who gave us life. God, through Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to take that piece of paper that, and we're going to spend the next 30 seconds um, allowing you to just reflect upon what are you searching for and what is truly for you the daily bread that God provides. Write a phrase or a word on that card. And after the service, those who wish can go over to that cross that is lying there. That cross has been there since, uh, all throughout Lent, and we are creating a mosaic. So you take that card and then pin it at, after the service. For those of you who uh, um, um, are not going to go to the cross, uh, there are baskets in the back where you can place the cards in, and we will um, uh, put it on the cross for you. So let's take a, the next 30 seconds to just kind of reflect and write those words. When we're done, we're going to be singing our closing hymn, When We Are Living, found on page 356 of our United Methodist Hymnal. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. So I invite you to stand as you are able.
be seated. Um, after the service, as you exit out, there is a basket in the back with little uh, rocks, the river rocks. And um, Marion has brought them in, and I, we invite you to go and, and take a piece of rock. Um, I actually don't have it with me, but I do have it in my office. And I kind of use that as a, a focusing um, I, thing uh, for when I pray. And so um, it is like a meditation rock, so I, I, we invite you to take a piece of rock that's in the basket in the back. And then on your way out, you might want to go that way first, take off your shoes and walk around in the uh, Friendship Garden, check it out, and then swing back around this way because after all that walking, you're going to be tired and you're going to want some cake so that we can celebrate with Dr. Luby. <laughs> I'm going to tease him for a while until he gets annoyed at me. Um, all of the celebration. So with that, uh, receive the blessing. Go forth this day, trusting in the Lord. May God be the source of your sustenance, in both for the body and for your spirit. May you go forth knowing that you are a child of God, that we belong to God, and God is the one that will provide for you. Amen. <laughs>